Hey folks, I'm back again. I'm going to be playing another Turtle Archaeologist, because goddammit, I'm going to succeed with one of them eventually. Uh, maybe. <laughs> um, it's going to be lawful again, because I think that's the most interesting. Um, in terms of main things that lawful will get you, you can get Graze Rundier from Sacrifices, um, which you can use as a weapon. More likely, you're going to want to use it to forge the Gauntlets of Purity which are pretty awesome um, for any character, but I think particularly useful for turtle archaeologists because um, it makes them decent at spellcasting because they get power regeneration. And also it, they serve as gauntlets of strength, which are very hard for turtles to get. Um, so uh, that's probably worth giving upgrades on here. Um, especially because there are like other artifacts that you can use out there, and you can't dual wield with Graze on Deer unless you have some form of Gauntlets of Power or Giant Strength. Um, the only way, to, other way to get it is Hand of Vecna, which is not guaranteed, and also you have to fight Vecna, which is a pain. Um, anyway, point is, if I get Graze on Deer and Dragon Bane, I'm almost certainly going to forge the Gauntlets of Purity instead of actually using Graze on Deer. Um, even though Lawful Archaeologist is like the poster boy for Graze Deer use. Um, anyway, um, so you get Graze Deer. Other than that, it kind of screws you over. Um, there's no really good Lawful artifacts that grant magic resistance, and turtles can't wear body armor or cloaks, so they can't get magic resistance from Grey Dragon scales, or Grey Scaled armor, or Cloak of Magic Resistance. So that means they pretty much have to wear the amulet, which means they can't be wearing life-saving or flying. Um, I think I mentioned last video that I recently got a turtle archaeologist to the astral plane and then I died to famine, which really sucked, um, although the game was very fun. Uh, and that was in part because I was wearing magic resistance. I had like three amulets of life-saving, but I wasn't wearing them. In retrospect, I had polymorph control. I um, had death resistance from the Gauntlets of Purity, so I, there really wasn't a reason for me to be wearing magic resistance. Like, I think the only main difference would be it have damage from magic, magic missiles, which is somewhat important, um, and it means that sl slightly few of your items get cancelled, and if you're polymorphed, you don't get unpolymorphed by cancellation. Um, and yeah, that's kind of it. Like, in vanilla, magic resistance is super important because it's the only way you can be immune to the touch of death, other than being in some poly form. Um, but the Gauntlets of Purity make you immune as well, so... Yeah, suddenly it becomes less important. Um, anyway, so certainly that's something to consider if if I get that far. Oop, that's not 100 shark mates, that's 50. They're selling it and not buying it. Um, where was I going with this? Right, so anyway, um, neutral archae turtle archaeologists could wish for various artifacts to give them magic resistance. Probably Platinum Yandorian Express card would be the best option. But Lawfuls don't have that luxury. But I think that just makes it more interesting because it makes, means you have tougher choices. Um, Plus, there's a chance you can go Art of Wishless, which is kind of fun, <laughs> since you don't have to worry about wishing for Grey's Wand here. Okay, this is going to be an attack wand of some sort. Sleep is the least helpful it could possibly be, and that's still pretty darn helpful. So I am going to hope my cat picks that up. Cat? Dog? I don't remember what I have. Okay, and I never remember which bracket is which. Okay, this is the strange object. This is not. Good to know. Um, and Goblin Town is on this level. Bustling Town nearby means Goblin Town. Um, but yeah, anyway, the only sources of magic resistance via artifacts for Lawfuls are... Well, so Magic Bane, if you happen to get it somehow, I suppose. But you probably have to wish for it, and... 
portals are restricted and staff have no way of getting it unrestricted, so that's pretty useless. Um, and then the like in terms of vaguely plausible options, um, you've got. Um, actually, I'm going to see what this gem is. If it's valuable, then maybe my cat can steal it and I can launder money that way. Nope. Okay. Um, where was I? Right. Uh, so, uh, Scepter of Might, the caveman quest artifact, is lawful. It's a really good weapon, um, but it's a mace, and I'm restricted in maces. So... That's that. If I like happen to get Demon Bane as a sacrifice gift, I get unrestricted in maces, and then I guess it's a possibility. But it's still a weapon that you have to wield in order to get magic resistance, which is never good. Especially because you tend to face a lot of Balrogs towards the end of the game, um, which will usually have full whips and can steal your weapon. Um, the only other option is Drambroleg which is a lawful axe. Um, it's a pretty solid weapon. Does a damage, bonus damage to, um, to everything, and can kill Balrogs in one hit, which is neat. But, and it grants magic resistance on wield. But again, that's on wield, which means um, it's a rather fragile form of magic resistance. Anyway, that's all not something to worry about for a fair while, but it is there. Um, I'm not going to identify this wand, because basically I know that if I want something dead, I can zap it. I can zap this at it, and it will probably become dead. Um, and furthermore, I do not want the beam reflected at me. And that's all I really need to know. So, um, yeah. Um, it does mean that if I find Goblin Town, I'm probably just going to go straight in to try to kill the Goblin King. Um, normally, the protection racket is pretty much not possible. I suppose as a healer, it's like plausible because you get a wand of sleep, so you could maybe immediately sleep the Goblin King. You know, you know, you could march right up to the Goblin King make it fall asleep and then kill it or have your pet kill it. Um, but for instance, archaeologists don't really have much of a hope of the protection racket usually because uh, even if they have a bunch of vaults in early levels or if they find gems or whatever, um, they have no way of getting to mine town since it's blocked off unless you kill the Goblin King. And they aren't really good at killing the Goblin King. Um, however, with this attack wand, it's pretty guaranteed that I'll be able to, so... At that point, all I need is gold, which currently I have none of, but as an archaeologist, and especially one with access to a general store where I can sell gems if I find them, there's a decent chance I'll be able to um, be able to do some protection rackety things. Oh, <laughs> well, that was an eventful couple of moves. Um, I'm going to just hang out here for my health to... And my dog's left. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. Um, one problem is... Um, Codlin Town is dark. Turtles don't have infravision. Um, in case you were not around for my last video, turtles start with swimming, which means they can breathe underwater, but will still be able to get strangled or suffocated beware. Um, they uh, get warning at level 5, and they get regeneration at level 12. Um, and also they are speed 10, which is slower than a normal character. It means that uh, speed 12 monsters, including the Goblin King, um, there's always a chance they'll get two moves on me instead of just one, which is a real pain. Um, yeah, uh, so that's something to watch out for for sure. Um, I'm gonna get to hope 
Oh, I'm already at level 2, actually. Never mind. I was going to say I want to get to level 2 just so I have a bit more health as a buffer, even though it means the protection racket isn't as much of a thing. I'm actually close to level 3, which I wouldn't mind either, honestly. Um, looks like... Yeah, okay. Uh, this bone dagger. I remember my dog was carrying it around, so it's uncursed. I guess there's two of them now, but I can use it to force the lock. Oh, I've been wielding my whip this whole time, haven't I? Oops, it's embarrassing. Um, yeah, I never actually explained what the deal was with pickaxes and their accuracy. I was getting to it, I promise, but <laughs> this is the last video where I died. Um, so anyway, yeah, uh, they made it so that the to hit value was like the value of the we weapon damage type, which is represented internally as a number. Um, so whack is represented, which is the type of damage that pickaxes do, was represented with a zero, which means that whacking weapon tools like pickaxes had a plus zero to hit. Um, I don't know if this was just an oversight or whether it was actually intentional, because it does sort of make sense that whacking weapon tools would be not very accurate, and piercing ones would be a bit more accurate, and slashing ones, which you can just kind of flail around wildly, would be even more accurate. Um, but it also seems quite plausible that this was just a total accident. Um, anyway, two years ago in vanilla, they changed this so that uh, whacking um, was represented as with a four instead, so that all of the uh, damage types were represented with different bits, um, which probably is good practice. I don't really know. <laughs> not not a not a programmer, um, but uh, it also meant that blunt weapon tools like pickaxes and uh, what else? Um, there's another one. Maybe grappling hooks? I think they might be blunt. Um, they are now plus four to hit. So my pickaxe is pretty much all around better than a bullwhip, except for the rare cases where, uh, like, I'm facing an acidic enemy that I feel comfortable facing, which is unlikely since they will likely kill me. Um, and yet, uh, so yeah, I mean, like, if I'm facing an acidic enemy, I wouldn't want to hit it with my pickaxe because it would corrode it. But I also probably wouldn't want to hit it at all since it's acidic and would deal acid damage. So. If for some reason I decided to face one anyway, I'd use my bullet. Whip. Um, similarly, I can use it to like disarm enemies. This is not amazingly useful because <laughs> as a turtle, I have absolutely terrible dexterity. Um, oh yeah, actually. Uh, <laughs> so if I take off all my armor, you can see I have. Uh, that's not. Oh wait. Hmm. Oh, I'm level 3, that's it. Um, is that when my AC increased? Or am I just be wrong? I was going to say that uh, I only had 9 points of AC when naked. Normally turtles have 10 points of AC at the beginning of the game. Um, but uh, I have 10 points right now. I think it's because I'm level 3 and you get a bonus point of AC every 3 levels. Um, point is, my dexterity is so bad that it's actually giving me a penalty to AC. <laughs> um, a one point penalty T to be exact. So that's fun. Um, because whips rely on dexterity to do stuff like disarming enemies, um, it's le the whip's less useful than it might otherwise be. Still decently useful. I uh oh. Run away. Okay. Nope. Oh, run away again. Well, the shaman's probably dead. No idea if it left a corpse. Um, if it did, my dog ate it. Which is fine, I guess, but... Yeah. Uh... Huh. Okay. What should I eat? 
Viking corpse. Um, I'm certainly going to heal up before trying anything drastic. Uh oh, poison dart. That's really not great. So we learned last game, poison is a real pain. And I have no idea which way it came from. So I'm, yeah, I'm just going to hang out here until a monster shows up. Okay, it was a kobold. Good to know. Um, I can't use poisoned weapons without incurring an alignment penalty, which I'm not eager to do. Um, so I probably won't use it, use them, but I certainly don't want them used against me, so I'm picking them up. Although, I think there might be a bug where poisoned weapons actually don't do extra damage against you. I think I heard something about that. Certainly I'm not going to risk it. Um, and either way, if that's true, it's fixed in the next version, so I don't want to get in bad habits. Um, anyway, uh, goblins are also poison resistant, so including the Goblin King. So there's no point in using them anyway. Uh, I want my dog near me so I can hide behind him if need be. Whatever. No idea where it is. Um, so, oh there. As soon as I stop looking for it. Okay, here we go. Uh, let's see what we got. Lightning. Alright, solid. Um, it's probably greedy of me to go for the double zap. There's no really good level geometry to do that. Maybe if I go all the way down here. The problem is, regardless, I risk getting hit myself and or I have to be... Yeah, th there's just no good way of doing it without being within two spaces of the Goblin King, which would allow him to hit me. Um, and... Yeah, he could straight up kill me in one shot, so... I don't want that to happen. Um... And also, I might hit myself with the lightning if I do it wrong. So, I'm just going to keep zapping him single shot style. And yeah, that was enough. Cool. A lot of fun. Um, and... There are usually some gems in here. Let's hope there are some valuable ones. So that's certainly not guaranteed. What else do we have? Dang. All worthless. Um, there are some more gems on Gollum's level. But it's also infested with piranhas, which would absolutely destroy me. Um, so yeah, that's not happening. Uh, oops. Well, that was useless. Um, okay. Uh, we do have a good stock of daggers, which is cool. Uh, was there another pickaxe that I passed over? I believe there was, just outside of Goblin Town, actually. Um, and yeah, I've decided to screw the protection racket. I want to get big and strong so that I don't die to one hit from literally anything. Um, oops, rat. Because uh, yeah, I don't have any gems, I haven't seen any vaults. Who knows when they'll show up? Um, I do not. Yeah, I do not want to keep my level low until that happens. Yeah. So anyway, where I was going with this pickaxe thing was, um, Maddox are forgeable, and Maddox are also awesome. Um, so provided this hammer is uncursed, which I do need to check. Um, just remember to name my lightning wand how many times I zapped it. Something I learned from watching another player a while back, and I'm trying to get in the habit, because it is obviously a good idea. <laughs> um, anyway, um, Maddox are forgeable, but you need a pickaxe to do it. Um, so currently, I don't remember the recipe off the top of my head, um, but I know it needs a pickaxe, and I think 
think I can make the rest with like arrows and crossbow bolts and daggers. I actually might not quite have enough at the, this exact moment, but I can still make one. Um, I can only make an iron one at the moment though. Uh, and I'd much prefer a mithril one because it's lighter. Um, so, uh, and it would do more damage to goblins, which is, would be nice, I guess. Um, something like platinum or gold would also do a bonus damage, but it would be even heavier, so that's a non-starter. Um, point is, uh, I'd much prefer to only do it if I have access to multiple pickaxes, because... Well, first off, I want to... Yeah, that's basically the point. Uh, okay, here's my dog. Come on. Where'd he go? Come on. You're carrying something. That means you want to be next to me. So you can drop it and gain my favor. Um, okay. Let's see how you feel about this Warhammer. Oh, it immediately picked it up. So quickly I didn't even notice. Okay. Um, how about this curved, curved sword? Oh, it's an Orcus scimitar. For some reason I forgot about that. I thought it might be normal scimitar. Um, normal scimitars you can use to forge sabers, which is obviously useful um, for archaeologists. But... Yep, that's not apparently relevant for this particular character. Um, I'm going to throw daggers at this mold, because... Oh, it took only one dagger. That's neat. Because, um, yeah, I said again to me. I'd rather not melee it. Oh, a bone carved staff. Um, this grants bonus to some spell school. can never remember which one gets which bonus, but... Uh, it'll be useful, probably. I think it might be divination? Actually, that would be pretty useless, because I am already quite good with... I, I can be quite good with divination spells. Um, I'll have to look it up. I never remember which staff is which. Anyway, it's not useful right now, but it can be in the future. Uh, so, my, the steel warhammer is good. Um, oh, I don't know why I dropped that. Um, now I'm just hoping to get to the shop so that I can... Uh, price ID all my ammo so I know if any of them are enchanted or have, or magical so that I can use those to make them attic. Um, there are zombies around, so I'm hoping to bypass them with a whole lot of pickaxing. And that's a zombie. I'm going to tin it. It's probably a zombie anyway. Um, kobolds are the trickiest zombies because... Um, Oh, there's another one. Well, it's definitely a zombie. Um, all the other zombies are have um, are of races that can also be players, if that makes sense. So, like giant zombies, uh, orc zombies, goblin zombies, etc. Um, they there's all for all of those. There's um, There's a uh, you can play as a as a giant as an orc as an elf etc., um, which means that the normal so like um, gnomes are called rock gnomes to differentiate them from player gnomes. Dwarfs are called mountain dwarfs etc. So their corpses show up as rock gnome corpse, mountain dwarf corpse etc. But if they're zombies, it just shows up as plain old gnome corpse, dwarf corpse etc. Um, so you know that when it's a zombie corpse. With kobolds, both undead and un-undead kobold corpses are just called kobold corpses. So you never really know. Um, okay, anyway, let's just see if any of these arrows are good. Um, no, I'll keep them because they might be plus zero and so it would be useful to have them to compare against. These are probably also plus zero. Um, their rustiness does not matter for forging purposes, um, but obviously 
they are in general less useful. Um, I'm going to keep them around because it's possible all these other arrows are like cursed or something. Which again does not necessarily matter for forging as long as the second item you use in a forging recipe is not cursed. It's fine because it's the beatitude of the second item that affects the beatitude of the uh, of the final product. But the pickaxe I have, I found on a rock trap, so it's almost certainly cursed. Um, which means I'd much prefer to use non-cursed stuff for everything else, so that I know I can end up with something that is um, not cursed. Because a cursed matic would be obviously very bad. Um, okay. It looks like all of the arrows I can usefully use are not enchanted. Still gonna make a matic. Just gonna be slightly less happy about it. Um, okay, let's see. I can drop this crude sword because I'm never gonna use it. Corroded crude dagger, I'm probably not gonna use. Um, bone car staff is probably decently expensive and I don't need it right away. Eh. I'll keep it for now. I don't even know why I'm carrying a leather studded armor. Certainly don't need that. Uh, yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I actually have to go now, so... Uh, I'll probably keep filming later for this same video, because it's been kind of short. We'll see. Um, problem with going to Curses from TTY is I can't just save randomly and then come back later with no, none of you viewers being the wiser, because this big message window means that you always know when I've come back. Um... <laughs> So yeah, gotta be upfront about it. See you guys later. In like two seconds, most likely. Bye. Hey folks, back again. If I recall, we were in the middle of price IDing stuff. Um, first, I'm just gonna do these daggers real quick for stuff like this. Um, Daggers are not really forgeable for anything, but sometimes you get a really good one and I'd like to know I have it, just, you know, so I know. Um, 52 Zork bids for the dagger means that it's magical. It could be terrible, it could be good, it's probably somewhere in between. Um, but yeah, I mean, if it's something like shock, then it might be worth getting some skill in daggers just so I can, like, use that as an offhand weapon or something. Um, did not really expect that to happen, but it's good to have checked. Um, and then some of these orcish daggers are probably cursed. Uh, one nice thing about having to take a break is that I now know um, that the bone carved staff is a staff of holiness, which is to say it boosts clerical spells. Um, good to know. Uh, could be useful, something like Remove Curse. Uh, at max intelligence and max level, I'd be able to cast it no problem, even though I'm restricted in clerical spells. But at lower levels or with lower intelligence, something like that. Maybe Create Familiar, which is level 5 in Evil Hack. Um, I could use the staff for. So I'm keeping that around, even though I won't need it in the near future, probably. Um, finally, on to price IDing the fun stuff. Um, we've got a... Oops. I'm going to hope that the shopkeeper takes care of this zombie. Does not seem inclined to. In that case, I will try to give it the run around. Oh, and I searched instead of... And I guess searching was actually a solid choice here. Um, okay, I'm waiting this time. Oh, oh, um, turns to flee. That's good. It means that this 100 scroll is a scare monster. Unfortunately, it will not work on the zombie because it's mindless, so I can't just hang out here for a while. Um, but I will name this scare monster. Um, I'm not going to pick it up because it might disintegrate, and that would be pretty useless. Um, okay, so this was a 200 Sorkmid ring. Definitely worth wearing if it's not cursed. 
100 Zerg made ring significantly less likely to be worth uh, wearing. There are some good ones like warning and protection from shape changers. I love protection from shape changers. It's like not always useful, but when it is, it's really useful. Um, warning is not helpful because I get it intrinsically. And actually, that's all the magical stuff I have right now. So I'm piecing out, leaving the shopkeeper to deal with the zombies. Oh, and hoping my dog stays the heck in the shop. Okie doke, looks like the mimic has stopped. That's nice. Um, okay. And yeah, there was, I don't believe there's anything in there I really wanted to steal. The scare monster scroll, actually, I totally do want to steal. Hmm. I'll come back just when I'm just a little bit stronger. Uh, okay. Um, yeah. Um, I believe the other thing I was unsure about, which I have since um, checked on, is Matic. I can't forge it yet. Um, it requires a dwarvish short sword, which in turn requires a normal short sword if you don't have a dwarvish one. Um, which in turn requires crossbow bolts, which I don't have. So, oh, my pickaxe is still in my bag. I forgot to price ID the other pickaxe, whoops. It's almost certainly cursed though, so. Although I'm not sure if it actually that actually affects how expensive it is. Dang, now I, now I gotta check out that, just out of curiosity, if nothing else. Um... What is this creature? I'm just waiting in place. I am not about to be the first one to move to that square. Okay, it's straight up not moving. It's gotta be a mimic. Yep, it is. Okie doke. Well, as long as it... Okay, it's still moving. Great. I was thinking I could just dig around it if it wasn't moving, but it seems to be on a mission now. Maybe it stopped again? It appears to have stopped, yes. So I can't dig into the shop because that would piss off the shopkeeper. But I can dig almost into the shop. Um, and I'll eat, I don't know, some kobold meat, I guess. Why not? It's not poisonous or sickness making even though it came from a zombie because tinning makes it safe. Um, and it's not like I'm using it for anything else, so I might as well get rid of it. It's terribly inefficient, so. Okay, zombie successfully, or mimic successfully avoided, and zombie successfully killed, which is also solid. Uh, and then I need to put my pickaxe into my bag again. Um, and then what, what was here that I might want to buy? Wand, probably useless. I don't think I'm going to distract my dog with that. Uh, ring also maybe not worth it. Sca a scroll of scare monster obviously is. Even ID is semi-useful. Um, I'm going to pick everything up except the scroll of scare monster. Oh! Shoot. Glad I was able to quit. I hadn't realized that both 100 Sorkman scrolls were here. That was a silly oversight. So actually, either one of them might be Scare Monster. Let's rename real quick. Mm -hmm. Alrighty. Um, in that case, I will pick up everything except those two scrolls. Just shove it on over here. Yeah, I can always pick up the ID scrolls later. And then I'm just going to kick these closer to the door. So my dog is more likely to go pick them up. Oh, and that's a mimic, not an actual wand. Should have remembered that. The perils of going back to a game. <laughs> yeah, okay, this is so not worth it. Um, whatever. Now that I'm here, I might as well identify the pickaxe. It's just normal. That's pretty much what I figured. Well, that was pretty useless. Um, oh, and I'm just going to name the pickaxe since it's probably cursed. Um, so I will remember not to wear it. Wield it.
and get out my known quantity pickaxe. Yeah, whatever. I forgot to name the maybe cursed pickaxe as plus zero, even though it is, or as less than one, even though it definitely has less than one in enchantment, but whatever. Okay, let's try out this dagger. And it's cursed, so it probably is a bad, um, bad object property like fumbling or hunger. Well, that's disappointing, but it happens. Okay, zombies down at least. That's solid. Um, and I'm only burdened when I do that. I'm just going to drop the zombie corpse here. I am going to check out this t t uh, chest. Oops, went the wrong way. Pickaxe. Gotta love it. Um, I know that the bone orcish daggers are uncursed. Well, actually, I'm going to test these other ones. I'll keep the bone ones because they're kind of nice. Okay, looks like those are probably cursed. So let's try these. Definitely uncursed. Cool. Um... Hmm. There we go. Damn menu colors. Um, regardless, I'm going with these because they're heavier, so slightly less valuable to me than the bone ones. Not that it really matters. And I am encumbered. Not really surprising considering how much random crap I'm carrying. Uh, weak, slightly surprising. That's what the starting food rations are for. Luckily, I was able to get downstairs again before the zombie came back. Um, and now I'm gonna try to make for the stairs. It looks like the other zombies are not nearby, so we're good. And I'm just gonna drop all the random crap I have. Um, Crap, 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 crap. I don't even need a bone arrow. I can't use it to forge, and I'm definitely not going to be shooting arrows. <sighs> don't need the staff right now. Okay, fine, I'll keep some arrows. I'll keep ten arrows. Um, and... Yeah, I think that's about it. Maybe I should keep some darts because they're also good for forging stuff, but they're also poisoned and I'd rather just have them on a totally separate level from me because poison is scary. Oh, I have a dog. I should be curse testing my rings. Lovely. And we're just going to the next level before the zombies can catch up to us. And we'll try this other ring, also uncursed. And it's protection. That's lovely. MC of 1 now, and an extra point of AC doesn't go amiss either, I suppose. Um, let's just... Okay, we're on turn 2696. A turn has passed. We have not regained HP. Um, so the agate ring is not regeneration. Probably wasn't going to be, but there have been a couple times when I've not bothered to test a 200 Zorkwood ring, and it's turned out to be reg regeneration, and I felt silly. So I'm glad to have checked. Uh, orc zombie. So I think D level 3 is. It might be only D level 4 when Spellbooks start generating in statues. If it is D level 3, though, I'm still not going to break the statue because there's a slim possibility to statue trap, in which case I'd rather let stoned zombies lie. Um, okay, I'm getting price increased by one third. So, good to know. There's a lot of food in this general store. A whistle could be magic, that would be lovely. Eucalyptus leaf is great because it's an easy cure for sickness, which I I'm quite likely to get from zombies. 
Um, everything else in the shop is pretty mad. Oh, uh, enchant armor or remove curse. So that's nice. Wait, actually, it might be. No, yeah, okay, I've already found enchant weapon. I couldn't remember if I had. So it can't be 60 Zorgments. Um, hmm. I think I'm just going to leave it for now. I don't super need it. What I do very much want are the whistle and the eucalyptus leaf. And luckily I have enough gold to buy them. Alrighty, so I'm just going to test this whistle so I know what I'm getting. Magic whistle, lovely. Definitely buying that. And with the magic whistle, it's easier to shoplift. So I'm going to take this. I guess the tin too. It could be something really good. Um, and I'm just going to drop them by the door. So that... Um, my dog can pick them up easily. I guess I could just pay for the tin. I'll do that actually. Alright. Oh, and there were gems. I should ID those. Oh, it was worthless glass. That's why I didn't notice it. Okay. Um, wielding my bull whip. I have a decent amount of health. Okay, no acid. Lovely. Um, is my dog, like, frozen or something? It's not moving. Okay. Well, they don't have a stethoscope, so I can't be certain. But it seems plausible that my dog hit a floating eye, which means there's one on the level, which means I must be very, very careful. I do not want to run into one of those. Um, I'm going to try to move with G when possible, because I will not hit floating eyes, pretty sure. Um, yeah, there it is. Okay, um, I'm going to try to kill it, obviously. Um, but yeah, I might be able to get some... some telepathy out of it, that would be lovely. And there's my dog again, back in fighting form. Uh, okay, I'm pretty far from getting to basic and dagger, but if this takes too long, I might end up getting there. Oh, oh, that was easy, and my dog didn't even get frozen. And I have telepathy now, that's nice. Um, okay, so no mish mind. I'm going straight down there. I have a decent level. Oh, it is dark. That's not great. But I have a decent level. I've killed the Goblin King, and I'm also looking for a Dwarvish Short Sword, so... This seems like the best stop for me. Um, one funny thing is Hobbit pickpockets are peaceful, uh, to, uh at least to all of the lawful turtle archaeologists I've played. I can only assume it's because hob hobbit pickpockets are lawful like hobbits are, which feels kind of backwards, but that's the way it goes. Um, and I'm just letting my dog kill this stuff because I want to get it up and level so it can kill mountain dwarfs if they get any good gear. Oh, and I have two... Um, two eucalyptus leaves now. Okay, no more. Probably my dog won't take it on, at least quickly. Has a thiel stonged club. That's lovely. That's going to be my favorite ranged weapon for sure. Um, oops. And I've also got a lockpick. This has been a very few, fruitful few turns in the gnomish mines already. Um, my dog has moved on top of the gnome corpse. Well, it might be because... Nope, I didn't want to eat the corpse. So I'm pretty sure that means this bound club is uncursed. Let's just give it a whirl. Yep, we're good. Okay. 
Um, I'm going to try to get that up into basic as soon as I can. And my dog killed that gnome, so... Ooh, has a lit candle. How I know that, but... Cool. I guess I could feel the heat, actually. Okay, that's reasonable. Um, I'm going to snuff it for now. Obviously of no use to me until I'm unblinded. I think I'm actually going to take this stuff with me. And the rune dagger, so I can name Sting for elves. Or possible elves, at least. And I'll take this thong club. Maybe it's enchanted or magical. Um, and I'm just going to sell this armor that I found in the shop, because some of it's decently expensive. Um, boop, boop. Nice. Nice. And then let's see about these new weapons I've got. Eight gold pieces. Uh, I believe that means the steel thonged club is plus one. Yeah, that's what it means. So that's great. Steel also has a plus one damage bo bonus over iron anyway, and it's rust proof. So that's a really solid weapon. Um, this other thong club is not helpful, so actually I have to sell that. Um, and now it's identified as a necklace, so that's nice. Not really necessary, but nice, I guess. Um, a plus two dagger, very nice find. Um, I will absolutely use that for a nice matic, unless I decide to use it for some other nice weapon. Well, that's for later me to find out. Um, and then this rune dagger is probably plus zero, so that doesn't matter too much. Um, okay, back to the gnomish mines we go. And let's see what else we can find. Actually, I'll stick on my candle. It probably won't last long. If it starts to gutter, I'll probably turn it off to save it for if I really, really need it. Um, but... Oops, my pickaxe is in my bag again. Um, but there's a decent chance I'll find another candle or a lamp or something, so I might as well use the candle while I have it. We've got ourselves a third pickaxe. Just so many pickaxes today. I'm just going to leave it up there to identify later. Um, yeah. Let's just see if there's a trap here. Bear trap. Not fun. And see, there we go. Life finds a way. It's probably cursed, so that, that's kind of a pain. Um, well, no, it was a gnome corpse and it's carrying a bunch of stuff, so it could have just been a normal monster gnome that wandered into the bear trap and died, in which case the candle would not be cursed, I believe. What kind of corpse was it? Oh no, it, it was a... It's not a rock gnome corpse, so it was a generated corpse, which means its gear is probably cursed. As opposed to a rock gnome corpse, to be clear. Um, you can see I'm wielding my Atlas, which I probably should not have been doing when I was fighting the uh, zombie, because that's legit dangerous. Um, but there you go, that's what I did. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm trying to get up my skill on that. I'm getting there. Um, oh, I should not have these quivered anymore. Oh, I shouldn't fire blindly because my dog might kill the rock piece piercer and then get hit by my club. Okay, um, hmm. I don't think glass is that valuable. Cloaks are pretty good though. They're like 25 gold. It's pretty decent for 10 AUM. Um, okay, there goes candle one. Candle the second, it is indeed cursed. Whatever. Uh, anyway, um, let's see, what else are we doing? So, so in terms of my Atlas, I should be trying to throw it more. 
return traps um, because I'll be more accurate with it when I throw it until I get to basic skill. Um, I think I might have talked about this before, but it's a funny little um, evil hack. hack. Um, when you hit in melee with a wielded weapon that you're restricted or unskilled in, or if you hit with an object that isn't a weapon, so like a potion, perhaps of paralysis, or, um, so yeah, sling bullets I don't need, but I figured I'd IDM just for the heck of it. Um, they're obviously used in slings, which are pretty useless weapons, so I'm not bothering with that. Um, where was I going? Right, so, um, if you with a wielded weapon or something that isn't that you're restricted in or unskilled, or if you hit with something that's not a weapon, like a cockatrice corpse or a paralysis potion or something, you only ever have at most a 75% chance of hitting. Um, so with a plus one Aklas, presumably my chance is around that. Um, so there is um, all, th all things being equal, it's better if I throw it because my chance of hitting is not capped at 75% chance when I do that. Once I get to basic, then my accuracy will be the same either way. Um, and so it'll depend on whether I want to stay at ranged or what. Um, yeah. Actually, I'm going to eat this corpse. Might as well. I'm not satiated or anything, so... Um, you can see there's a towel over... over on the... to the right of the stairs. I'm gonna get to it. Um, I can dig to it. One nice thing about being a turtle um, is you start with a pickaxe. So gnomish mines are usually really a pain for turtles um, because they're large, which means they can't fit through corners. So I don't know if you saw the message before, but when I tried to go th through here when this was a wall, I wasn't able to. It said my body was too large to fit through. Actually, you can see it up here in this handy dandy m message window. Um, so that's true of centaurs and giants too, but turtles have the additional problem that because they can swim, um, water squares are considered safe teleport locations. So if they step on a teleport trap, they can end up in water, and often water squares um, Oh, I'm just getting all of the nice dart materials. Where is this dude getting so many good darts? I want a supplier. Um, often water squares are in diagonal locations or otherwise hard to reach. So a pickaxe is really useful. Um, anyway. Oh, I'm almost getting hit by darts as well. That might be where some of these darts are coming from. And another poison dart. Yikes. Um, well, that's a shame, because it means the mithril dart was presumably from the rock trap. Or from the dart trap, whatever. Does the message say? No, it was the rock gnome who threw a mithril dart. So presumably the said rock gnome has more mithril darts somewhere? I guess we'll see. Currently I just kind of have to wait um, and eat all of these gnomes because I'm hungry. You speak tough, but can you back it up? No, you cannot. Um, anyway, somewhere around here is a gnome with mithril darts, and I would very much like to meet said gnome so I can make... Well, first make a corpse out of him, and then make a mattock out of the darts. And I've gotten trapped word. Blah. Just checking, maybe my pet happened to fall down too. Somehow, did not. Now I'm burdened. <sighs> um, the 27 darts all came from one place, so even though there's a lot of them, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're kind of dart. Thus, I must keep them on me. 
I don't want to drop them if they're like plus seven darts of frost, which they won't be, but if I drop them, they definitely will be. Um, okay, we found the upstairs. We can drop some stuff here until we need it later, including the darts that I was just winching about. Um, one, yeah, okay. One thing to note actually is I've found two stacks at least of because so I've picked up seven arrows and they merged with the ten I had. Um, so those are almost certainly uncursed plus zero arrows because they're apparently quite common. Um, also, I can drop these daggers since I'm not using them because I found my new best friend, the Atlas, which I still need to be getting my skill up in. I'm close to basic. Okay, is my Oh, my dog's gone. Dang. Where'd it go? Yeah, it's definitely not around. Sometimes it appears two squares away, so there's a possibility I just couldn't see it. But with my candle on, it seems like my dog is legit missing. Which stinks. It was a large dog. I had a magic whistle, so it's easy to keep track of. Um, dang. Ooh, crossbow bolts. That's what I needed for, uh, for a matic. So that's neat. Um, not so neat getting them shot at me. No must get bonus multi shots with crossbow bolts. So they can be pretty deadly with them. Okay, probably it was this dude shooting them. Don't need the crossbow though. Okay, I'm gonna save the candle for now then. Um, jellyfish, I'm staying the hell away from. They're poisonous. They're very slow. S significantly slower even than a turtle. Turtle. Um, but I still don't want to mess around with them. Okay. Um, I'm... I'm going to take off this 200 ring. I'm getting hungry quite a bit, so... I just rather not be wearing two rings since it hasn't seemed to be doing anything super useful for me. So it gets the boot for now. Uh, yeah. Um, and while I'm at it, I'm just going to check. I believe brass and bronze are both not rustable, so I don't have to worry about them if I end up in the water somehow. Um, I should put all these weapons and stuff in my bag, because since I'm not going to be using them anyway. Although some of them are super materials and not rustable. Whatever. The dagger I should definitely put in the bag so it doesn't get rusted away. Um, and these daggers. Yeah, I can drop them. I have a lockpick now. Er, I'll keep one because it is slightly possible that um, I'll end up forging a matic out of my pickaxe, and then I won't want to carry around two pickaxes, because that would be ridiculous. And the pickaxe is currently the main thing I'm using to open tins. So until I get a tin opener, a dagger is the next best thing. And a bone dagger is great, because it's very light. So um, I'll keep that dagger around in case I want to use it to open tins at some point. And, oh, I should go up. Um, I'm gonna, I guess I'll explore. I shouldn't put on my candle. I need to save it for useful stuff. For if I need it, like in emergencies. Um, I guess I'll explore the rest of the level. But then I'm also just going to poke my head upstairs to see if my dog's gotten level teleported up there. Perhaps. Um, I can also check on some of this new ammo I've picked up. Another tinning kit, huh? Um, okay, I'm gonna drop it. I don't want to be burdened while next to water. I'm pretty sure piranhas are high enough level that they'd show up on warning. Yeah, they would. Anything above, at least level four, will show up on warning. So at least I can't get totally surprised by one. But I could get surprised by a jellyfish, which, as I've mentioned, is poisonous. 
which is definitely not great. Um, actually, hmm. so normally I just totally ignore jellyfishes. Uh, oh, they're poisonous. Hmm. Well, so, no, but I can, okay, so as a turtle, I can easily go into the water and pick up a jellyfish corpse, and then I could take it out of the water and tin it. I'd have to take it out of the water because tinning kits are always iron, so they would rust if I tried to tin it in the water. Oh. Um, don't want to be burdened while fighting an orc. They're pretty scary. Oh, shh. Sh 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 that's not great. Okay, I've killed the orc. Let's see if I can just snake my way past. Burning is acid. Luckily, it didn't do much damage. Oh, and I'm trapped. Damn. Well, I'm not. I could use my lightning wand, but it would totally zap me, and that's not worth it. I'm not sure if it could double bounce me. I can never remember how far rays can travel. It like loses one or two on hitting the monster. And then it might lose more on reflection and then it hits two more monsters. It probably wouldn't double hit me, but still, even hitting me once would be bad enough. And I have no way of curing blinding. I guess I'll just start in on trying to kill it. Stole a tin, okay, that's manageable. Um, it appears that the nymph is not showing up on warning, so I'm going to put my candle on so I have a little bit of warning, haha. <laughs> um, when, for when the nymph appears. Alright, just go then pickaxe, solid. Um, so I'm certainly not going to use pickaxe throughout the game. There's much better weapon types available. But for now, I think it's going to be my go-to. I haven't found any... Well, a spear is an option. But I have so many pickaxes, I can easily make a pretty good matic. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I mean, because I could also easily forge a spear with a dagger and arrows. I could get a plus two spear even. Plus two dwarver spear would not be hard. And yeah, that would do 1d8 damage. What does a dwarvish matic do again? more than 1d8. Uh, I mean, you can't two weapon with it. But that would require me to have two good weapons. I mean, the Aklis is a pretty solid weapon. Hmm. This is a tricky one. I think I'm going to skill up in it for now, and I can always get rid of the skill later through a couple of means. Um, but yeah, I mean, with the nymph and all that craziness, I'd prefer to be more certain of hitting things now. And yeah, none of this armor is useful to me. I can't wear it, nor can I craft anything with it, nor is it particularly valuable. So, um, I really don't like to be burdened with a nymph on the level, but I mean, I gotta carry it somehow. And my candle's dead, and the nymph is back. Is, okay, I'm zapping it with lightning this time. No chance of a bounce. All right, that potential catastrophe is over with and not a catastrophe. So absolute win. 
um, have myself a looking glass, um, have myself a potion I found on a nymph. Um, so it could very well be, oh frick, that was silly. I thought it was a recently killed orc, but it must have been not recent. Luckily I have some eucalyptus leaves, so that was not game ending. I mean, I could have prayed, but I really don't want to do that because chances are I'm going to have to pray for something else. It's just that kind of game. Um, hmm. Low moaning, no zombies on the level. My pet's not on the level. I'm going to call it a wash. Um, what am I carrying that's so darn heavy? Um, well, the other pickaxe, that would do it. Why in the world am I still carrying that around? Carrying a bunch of weapons. I guess I don't need this steel war hammer on me. I'll only use it for forging. I know it's uncursed. We're all good there. There's nothing else for me to do with it, really. Um, okay. Avoid the sleeping trap. And then there's a jellyfish somewhere over here. So... I'm gonna cut through there. Puts me again near the water a little bit less. Um, still some areas to explore. There's no reason that I shouldn't have gone over there when I came downstairs, but I forgot and now I'm not near there anymore, so I won't bother. Let's pick up these. Keep these daggers over here because I'm lazy. Uh, is this the right diagonal? It is. Wait till it's within four squares or my necklace won't hit it. Okay. We can tin the centipede corpse. Um, we're wielding our pickaxe, right? Yep. So we can open the tin pretty easily and get a teensy bit of poison resistance. So actually, I'm going to keep track of this game. I have not done that before, but it's something I should totally do. I'm going to name my oil skin sack. Five RPOI for five percent, five percent, five RP for five percent poison resistance, resist poison, whatever. Um, I'm not sure if I'll keep up with this the whole game, but at least until I get to thirty-five percent poison resistance, which is the insta death, death preventing threshold, I would like to keep track. Ooh, that's probably a jellyfish. It is a jellyfish. Um, okay, so we're going in. We're going in, folks. Um, I can keep out this stuff. It's not rustable. Tins, I don't believe, are rustable, even though you'd think they're made of iron since tinning kits are. Maybe they're made of tin. Who knows? Lockpicks are iron. They're rustable. The iron pea whistle is, you guessed it, rustable. Pickaxe is definitely rustable. Tinning kits, as I've mentioned before, are rustable. Um, everything else should be fine. So let's enter the water. Yep, I'm good. No jellyfish corpse. They're small, so that's not surprising. They probably don't leave corpses very often. Take out this, this. I'll leave the tinning kit in there. I'm not going to be using it like super regularly, so I might as well safeguard it from rusting. Uh, how to do this properly? I'm trying to dig without giving them a clear shot to me. So that I don't, so that they don't keep interrupting me. Mithril darts, lovely. Um, I never did find the gnome that was firing mithril darts at me earlier, or maybe it just had the one from the dart trap or something. But now I have several of them, so I can easily make a mithril mattock, spear, whatever I want. Oh, and we have discovered paralysis, folks. 
Mithril daggers even. This is just a day for Mithril. Lovely. Um, hopefully some of these, I just have so many darts. Some of them have got to be good, right? I mean, better than Mithril, which is already pretty solid. Um, first, I'm just going to dash over to the stairs and drop off some stuff up there. Because um, I don't want to be burdened. Um, just going to drop most of everything I have. Oops. Oh, I screwed that. Uh, what did I do? I don't even know. How did I remove those particular things? Or did I remove... Whatever. Okay. Um, try the second. Remove the weapons. Put in... One arrow, one crossbow bolt. Just one of each so that I can price ID them. Um, and I'm gonna bring all my, like, daggers and stuff. Um, things that I only have one of as well. And then all of the other weapons. Save the actually wrong way. There's some sort of command that can toggle your selections, but I never remember what it is. Um, so I always just select everything with comma or period, and then I undo the things I want to keep. Okay. Um, have 90 free units of weight. I'd like more. Whatever. It's only one more floor until mine town, pretty sure, so. And I've explored half of it, so I'll probably be fine. Ooh, what am I getting warned of? Gnome King. It's not ideal. Does not seem to have a ranged weapon, though. Um, Gnome Royals, I don't remember the exact multi-shot bonus they get, but it is significant um, with crossbow bolts. So I think they shoot like four at you. Uh, not to be messed with. Yeah, it would be four, because Nobles get one more shot than regular old Gnomes. And Royals get one more than Nobles. So normal Gnomes get two, because they're Gnomes, so they have like a racial multi-shot bonus of four. So they're shooting two. Okay, now that that's sorted. Um, point is, you want to avoid gnome kings and queens with crossbow bolts. Because they will mess up your day. Okay, this is almost certainly just a small little space. Yeah, no squares undiscovered, but had to check. And dart trap? Arrow trap. Um, rejoice, I have gotten to 10 dexterity, which means I no longer have an AC penalty. You can see my AC number is green right now, which means it, because it's just gone down a point, or up a point, it has gotten better by a point. I just, I'm never going to know how to say that in a non-ambiguous way. Um, so that's cool. Plus I have one more dexterity, which is neat. I am now at my dexterity cap. Less cool. <laughs> Um, I don't think we ever went over starting stats. Um, mine are... I'm not going to lie, they kind of suck. Uh, my intelligence is really good, so that's nice, but I also currently don't have any spells to use that for. If I do find some, it'll, I'll be very glad to have high intelligence, but my strength is awful. My dexterity is as good as it can be, so fine. Um, my constitution is not amazing, but it's about par for the course for an archaeologist. Wisdom's decent. Not really an important stat for archaeologists. Charisma's bad. There's just nothing that I'm really particularly happy about except maybe my intelligence, which is currently doing nothing for me. So, underwhelming. Um, I'm going to check this out. Yeah, it's mine town. Good to know. 
uh, these ones in the water are moving very quickly and their ones end in the water. So they're piranhas. Um, I am going to explicitly dig around the edges so that the piranhas will not have a chance to, oh, and there's another one, okay. So there's just no way I can like move through this area without going next to a piranha. I learned in one of my early archeologist turtle games. Um, it was before I fully understood how movement really worked. Um, and I moved next to a piranha. I was at like a decent level. I had like 50, 60 health. And so I was pretty comfortable moving next to a piranha for a turn and trying to hit it. It promptly got four moves on me in a row. I was an un unburdened and I wasn't slowed or anything. Um, it moved four times in a row and it gets two attacks per turn, per move, whatever. Um, so it attacked me seven times, probably would have attacked me eight, but I was dead by the seventh, so... <laughs> Now I am deathly afraid of them. Um, so yeah, the way speed works is if you don't have an even multiple, if a monster that has a speed that's not an even multiple of 12, it gets randomly um, multiple of 12 proportionally based on what their speed is. So with a speed of 18, you have a 50% chance, a monster has a 50% chance of getting 12 movement points a turn, in which case they move once for that turn and a 50% chance of getting 24 movement points, in which case they move twice. So what happened is, I got, as a turtle, I happened to get 10 movement points for that one turn, and it wasn't enough to get me to 12. So I was, I moved and then I, it, I had to wait two turn, or like, I couldn't move for one turn while waiting for, a, while waiting to get 12 movement points. Um, and then, during those two turns, the one in which I moved and the one in which I couldn't move, um, the piranha happened to get two moves in each of those turns, and so that was a total of four. Um, fairly unlucky, but by no means impossible. Oh, um, I guess I should take off my gloves, because I don't want them to get burnt since they're actually offering AC. The fedora I couldn't care less about. It's only there to block zombie bites, and, and okay, now I'm kind of starting to care about it, because I don't want it to get burned away, um, which, yeah, an evil hack, once things get very burnt, or, or sorry, extremely, is it thoroughly burnt? I think it's thoroughly burnt. Once they get thoroughly burnt or thoroughly rusted or whatever, if they get burnt or rusted, etc. again, then um, they disappear, they're destroyed. So that's something to watch out for. Um, clearly this gnome wizard is also something to watch out for. Um, it's doing decent damage. I don't want to get next to it because... Um, okay, it's finally dead, thank god. Um, it could stun me and then keep me stunned. Uh, it would be a bit more dangerous in other circumstances, but still not ideal. Uh, Where'd the nymph go? Oh, it's still in the shop. Why is it in the shop? Whatever. It is no longer in the shop. Okay, nymph is gone. I'm gonna tin the corpse. Um, if I happen to find a ring of teleport control, then I'll want teleportitis, and nymphs are a good way to get it. So, that's that. Anyway, um, and then there's this other gnomish wizard to deal with as well. I'm just going to wait for it to come out of the temple. Hopefully. Will it? Won't it? The suspense is incredible. Okay, who had... Total? Tot? Something like that. Pretty sure not my god. Yeah, I'm Quetzalcoatl. Quet... yeah. Uh... I'm going to have some real difficulty deciding how to pronounce names. Okay, screw it. I'm just malaying this dude. I think it's probably less dangerous than risking stunlock after the long series of... Um, oh, did you see that right now? It was two squares away from me, and then boom, it was next to me. 
after, and I, while I was moving away. So I got two moves on me, basically just randomly. Okay, this is definitely not ideal. If I get stunlocked with a jaguar nearby, I'm totally f just dead. So, okay, now we're one on one. If I'm feeling really scared, I can use my wand of lightning and get them both, hopefully. Okay, I'm feeling pretty scared. I'm using my wand of lightning. Whew, that's that. Um, I'm very proud of myself for utilizing wands. Not something I tend to do well. Um, of course, it probably means I'll run out when I actually need it. Such is life. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to struggle with pronouns because, like, I don't know how to pronounce any of these. Um, any of these, like, Aztec things. Are they as all Aztec? I'm not sure. I feel kind of ignorant. Um, I know the quest artifact is in, from Aztec myth. I'm not sure if Quetzalcoatl is Aztec or some other Central American culture. Anyway, um, and I have no idea who the other gods are. I think most people have probably at least heard of this dude, at least if they're American and like have grown up in the American school system. These dudes do not know who they are. Maybe I'll look them up sometime. Um, but right now I am playing NetHack. Uh, okay. Well, let's check out the general store and then this one over here um, is going to be a cat. This Mine Town variant, you always get two Kobold Shamans and then two... I don't know if they're guaranteed to be a particular uh, maturity of cat, but they're like kittens or cats or something. Um, and if there is something good to steal or m money launder for protection money or something like that um, in one of these shops, then I can tame myself a pet and go crazy. Alrighty. Um, so you can see there are two mimics. So I should be careful of those. Um, Mithril Yah, not terribly helpful. You can't use them to forge anything. And they're probably just plus zero. I can't be bothered to look up what the normal price of Yah is. That's what long arrows are. I just don't know their official name because I'm not a samurai. Um, but yeah, it's probably nothing special. Uh, this wand... Likely a 200 Zork mid wand, so it's quite possibly good, but... Also could be 150, in which case it's quite possibly trash. I mean, 150 wand, Zork mid wands have their uses, but most of them don't really have a lot of oomph to them. Okay, 30 gold pieces, that means it's a plus one arrow. Oops. Um, solid. Oh, but because I BUC identified them, they won't stack with all the stuff I left behind. That was stupid of me. Oh well. Um, at least I know I have some good stuff, even if I don't know which stuff is good necessarily. These are probably plus zero, but not totally certain. Because um, negatively enchanted stuff just sells as if it was plus zero. So you can't ID them that way. I think it's a bit funny that shopkeepers are willing, because normally they're so strict about, you know, getting some profit. But when it comes to cursed items, they don't mind buying them for more than they're worth. That amuses me. I guess you always, I mean, they generally tend to be very inexpensive, so it's like a clearance sale sort of thing. Oh, I didn't identify the stuff in my bag. Oh, okay. Actually, this mithril arrow might have been 
picked up recently. It might actually be just a one thing that I have, in which case oh, it's not helpful. Mm, I'm not certain. Yeah, I think I might just have the one with the roll arrow. Well, that's a bummer. Um, still got plenty of these to test out, though, and most of these I have more than one of, so that's neat. Uh, okay. Um, I think I'm probably going to skip over this stuff later. Because, let's face it, it's super boring. Okay, so brief interruption in our price IDing. Um, Cobalt Shaman has come to say hi. So, yeah, we're killing that dude. Um, I'm going to just drop this arrow. It's worthless. Okay, um, and then these last few things. So you can see, oops, we have a decent haul, um, a fair number of decently enchanted uh, ammos, ammo kinds. Um, so I can't remember exactly which came from which stack, maybe I should have named it, but the point is I have plenty of stuff to make all the plus two equipment I could possibly desire. Uh, which is real nice. Um, this Aklis is also plus one, but I have a better one that is plus one and also steel, so I'm going to sell that. And I'm reluctant to sell any of this other ammo since I don't remember which has big stacks of stuff. This zag dagger, I don't need multiple. Well, maybe I'll keep it. I currently only have a couple daggers. I can always make more with arrows and darts, but... Anyway... Um... Alright. I'll keep most of this weapon stuff for now. Um, and then I still have a few more things to price ID. Just the Atlas, actually, and then some actually exciting stuff. Uh, so, Aklis. Oh, it's a plus two Aklis. Okay, that's arguably slightly better than my steel one in that it's a bit more accurate. Um, but it is rustable as well, so I'll have to be careful. I think I'll probably use it. If it gets rusted, I won't feel too sad about it. Um, but as a low leveled turtle without any luck, I can use all the um, accuracy I can get. Um, 300 Zorkby Potion. This is either... Actually, um, I've ID'd Paralysis because someone threw one at me on an earlier level. So it's gained something. Um, which is great. I'm going to see what its BUC is before I even think about quaffing it, though. Because uncursed gainability is a total waste. I mean, it's helpful, but blessed gainability is so much better that I'd absolutely want to wait. Okay, Smokey is a 100 Zorkman potion. Um, I'd say that's overall pretty promising. There's a good number of 100 Zorkman potions that, like you can alchemize or um, that are pretty common. There's also some that are not common. We'll see. Uh, okay, so the Nymph Potion is probably 150 Zork Mage, although it could also be 200. That is slightly supporting evidence that well, it, it doesn't, it's not evidence against the fact that it could be object detection. So we'll keep that in mind. Um, and then we're just going to go BUC test this stuff. Oh, Potion of Holy Water. That's lovely. 
Um, I could always blush, bless my smoky potion and just see if I can get a wish out of it. Uh, that seems probably a bit rash to me. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Oh, there's, I think there's Jack somewhere around here, so I should check for a magic lamp. It would be great if there was one, obviously. Um, yeah, we'll check that out. Uh, I don't have enough gold, I think, but, um, I th can't remember if we talked about this or if I discovered this during this skip, but, um, this Aklis was plus two, so that's neat. Okay, we've got two potential lamps. No, nope, one's a lantern, one's not a lamp. Oh. So close and yet so far. Um, I'm definitely taking the lamp though, because it's cheap and I don't have any provision, so super useful. Well, with that absolutely crushing disappointment, I mean, it was mildly disappointing, but whatever. Uh, oh, I didn't BUC, or not BUC, I didn't price ID my ring. 300 and uncursed. All right. Um, with my luck, it's con. Oh, sh did not mean to search. Did not mean to search. Okay, it's not chasing me. Um, okay, let's get out of the view of priests and shopkeepers. Gnomish watchmen will probably not be very dangerous if this is conflict. Come at me, bro. Okay, well, I got super weak just a few turns after putting it on, but that's hardly good evidence that that was, uh, that it's conflict, which makes you pretty hungry. Um, I was probably close to being weak anyway. So, this gnomish watchman doesn't seem interested in fighting me. Base level 10. Um, I believe it, it has to, uh, it will only, um, be conflicted if my level plus my charisma, which currently is, where's my level? Um, seven plus 11 is 18. So if my level plus my charisma minus its level, um, is higher than a d20, then, uh, it will start attacking me. So that's, a uh, 8 out of 20, or 7 out of 20, I suppose, um, chance. It's a bit, it's 35%, I so a bit more than a third. I think, given how many turns this Watchman has had, the ring is probably not conflict. Um, not necessarily the case, though. Uh, I don't know, I believe it was actually in the Hobbit game that I filmed previously. Um, I put on a 300 Zerkmid ring and I sat next to a gnome for a while and it didn't attack me. Um, so I thought for sure it wasn't conflict because gnomes are low level and I was decently high level. And then my pet green dragon breathed poison gas at me. I was not poison resistant at the time. So that could have been an insta-death, which would have been really, really dumb. Um, point is, ooh, ooh, that's lovely. Um, point is, I have no idea. I'm going to keep it on for now, though, because if it is teleport or polymorph control, that's poor man's magic resistance, and I don't have magic resistance right now, so I'll take it. Uh, my eyes tingle for a brief moment. This means I got permanent C invisible from a magic trap. And when I say permanent, I mean permanent until I accidentally step on another magic trap, at which point there's a chance it will get removed again. Um, but I will certainly take it for now. Huh. Not sure if I want to explore further. Gnomish wizards are scary, etc. And it's a dark level. Uh, and there's warning, cre warned of creatures around, multiple. And it just seem seems generally quite open. I'm going to turn on my lamp real quick. Doesn't give me much info, but I don't feel super happy about anything. Hmm. I'm just going to go real... Okay. Orange glass. 
And yeah, I seem to be pretty well surrounded by hostile gnomes of various stripes. I don't think it's worth exploring mine town yet. Or exploring mine down to mine's end yet. Um, I'm going to head over to Zokoban then. Um, oh, and I'll stop by the Goblin Town Forge to make some cool stuff. Violet Fungus. I believe I can tin um, for poison resistance. I can. Wait, is it even poisonous? It does not appear to be poisonous. That's fascinating. It will make me hallucinate, though, so I'm not going to eat it until I get a unicorn horn. Um, but yeah, I'll tin it to save it until then, because it's likely I'll get a unicorn horn before I'm fully poison resistant. Nope, didn't leave a corpse. Okay. Um, well, we're heading out then, and I think I'll end the video here, and I'll see you next time. Bye.